Stephen Burton, 86. What are the odds that Matthew Stafford actually ends up in Indianapolis? Everything I hear, uh-oh, fans with sources, says that Ballard wants him and that Stafford wants to come to Indy. I've yet to hear that. But, hey, the Colts need a quarterback. Stafford's available. The question is, what do the Lions want for him? And uh, I think it would make sense. I, they won't be dramatically worse, and they could be significantly better with Stafford instead of Phillip Rivers, Shereen. I certainly think he fits there, Mike. He fits what they want to do. He fits Frank Reich's offense, and he could be there for more than one year as a bridge quarterback. So a lot depends, like you said, on what the Lions want for him. What are the Colts willing to give up for him? They didn't have to give up anything to get Phillip Rivers. They just had to sign him to a contract, and frankly, it was a team-friendly deal that they got with Phillip Rivers last year. So here they are looking for a quarterback again, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I don't know that I'd say $25 million for Phillip Rivers at that point in his career is team friendly, especially when Brady got $25 <laughs> million as well. I thought it was more ski mask contract for Phillip Rivers, but hey, you know, reasonable minds can differ. Here's another one. Jamon Javian asks, do you think Matthew Stafford needs to go somewhere with the Dome Stadium because he's been playing in one, or would it be no problem if he goes to Denver? Now, look, I'd have to do a full analysis on his statistics playing outside versus inside, but every quarterback wants to play in a Dome if they can. I think it just makes it attractive it's just one of the when you list the pros and cons one of the pros that you check is dome stadium right yeah and you talk about lamar jackson remember we were writing those stories he's never played in a snow game in his life he hadn't even seen snow until he got to louisville and they had a snowball fight but he never played in it there and so a lot of these quarterbacks have never played in snow i don't know how many snow games matthew stafford has played in he grew up here in dallas he didn't play in many, if it, any, snow games in high school. He went to Georgia. He didn't play in many, if any, snow games, cold games in Georgia either. So he hasn't played in a ton of those, Mike. But I don't know that that necessarily matters. I think quarterbacks can adjust and then go where they, where they need to go. Everyone would rather play in a dome. I'm sure he would rather play in Indianapolis than somewhere than Denver, maybe, as far as conditions go. But you just want to go and have a chance to win wherever that is. Best place for him, I think, is a spot that has strong veteran leadership, not relying upon the quarterback yes. to provide it. Strong coaching, not relying upon the quarterback to provide it. And coaching that is strong enough to elevate the quarterback because I've never gotten the impression he craves the mantle of being a leader. That's been the one flaw in his game. And, and you really have to be picky to find that. But he's a great passer, great quarterback, and could make a team great next year. Venet, Virginia, could you see the Texans and the Packers swapping quarterbacks? Aaron Rodgers for Deshaun Watson, Shereen, what would you think of that? Ooh, that would be so awesome to me, but I couldn't see why Aaron Rodgers would possibly want to go to the Texans. I mean, you look at what Deshaun Watson did with the Texans this year. He led the league in passing yards, and look what it got him, four wins. They are not close to being a Super Bowl champion, but I think that would be exciting to watch. I think Deshaun Watson would be terrific in Green Bay. The over-under on Aaron Rodgers saying to Jack Easterby, get the expletive deleted out of my face would be three and a half seconds. So for that reason alone, <laughs> I want the trade to happen. Uh, PFT Pam Posse, what was wrong with our boy Blue during yesterday's game? That's a reference, obviously, to Bills quarterback Josh Allen. Or what did the Chiefs defense do that had him so rattled and out of sync? I look, I think it was a combination of the moment, plus the Chiefs' defense is pretty good. Chris Jones seemed to be everywhere that I saw Josh Allen yesterday, and he just, he just was off. And they've got a great secondary, very underrated. Great pass rush, very underrated. We, we talk about Mahomes and Tyreek and Kelsey, and it's all offense, offense, offense. The Chiefs have a pretty good defense, and the Bills walked right into the teeth of it yesterday. Yeah, and you, you look at Josh Allen's elevation, Mike. He went from getting the Bills to the to the playoffs last year, and they lost to Houston. They shouldn't have. This year, he gets some wins. He gets them to the championship game. They've taken another step. I think next year they'll be expecting to take that next step, which is get to the Super Bowl. And he's taken all those steps. Mahomes lost his first time in the AFC Championship game, too. Now, they should have won the game, as we said earlier, but he did lose his first one. I think it's all about taking those steps and learning how to win, and I think he did that this year. But he didn't look good there, in that game, for sure. There has been a real buzz in league circles. People who study the game, people who are at the games, people who see Josh Allen play were questioning whether or not Allen has caught Patrick Mahomes. Now, that's regular season Mahomes and regular season Allen. 
there is something about playoff Mahomes that rises to another level. And, you know, you think about this. Every week of the regular season, the Chiefs are taking the absolute best punch that the opponent has. They are the measuring stick the Chiefs are week in and week out. It becomes exhausting. And then you get to the playoffs. It's full focus. It's next level. And that's what we saw from Mahomes yesterday. And Josh Allen simply wasn't able to meet that level of performance, Shereen. Yeah, and I saw uh, Tony Dungy tweet this out. Mahomes, they're averaging 36.1 uh, points in the postseason, games he started and finished. It, they've had, he's had 15 drives in the postseason this year, seven touchdowns, four field goals, a missed field goal, one punt, and two kneel downs. This offense rolls when they get to the postseason, and they're doing it again, Mike. Last one real quickly from Nelly with a Y. Should the NFL have eliminated the two weeks off before the Super Bowl this year? A lot of people are buzzing about that. Why take two weeks to let one of these teams develop a COVID-19 issue? Let's keep this thing rolling. And my guess is there are plenty of people at the league office that were thinking, man, if there was only a way we could just play this damn game Sunday and be done with it because who knows what's going to happen over the next 13 days. Yeah, and we got no Pro Bowl. They don't need that anyway, but we don't have it this weekend. They could have played it this weekend, but obviously the schedule is predetermined. The Super Bowl was preset. No way really to, to move this thing like they probably want to, but in best laid plans, absolutely, they'd want to play the game this Sunday rather than wait another week and, and uh, the threat of an outbreak. Real quickly, Jay Boz, is Josh McDaniels ever going to be a head coach again if it's not in New England? No. I don't know that it's going to be in New England, though. I don't know. I, why yeah, would he have talked Bell check boys. to the Eagles about what was one of the least desirable jobs this cycle if he thought he was going to get the Patriots job at some point? Unless Bill Belichick really is going to go Warren Buffett, Rupert Murdoch, and coach into his 80s. But, folks, look, we got to be realistic about this. And, and, and George Hallis retired from coaching when he did for one very simple reason. He couldn't stand for three hours anymore. There will be a point where Bill Belichick is not able to physically accomplish the demands of the job. So what are you going to do? Are you going to coach from the coaching box? What, what are you going to do at that point? So I, I don't think Belichick's going to be there another 10 years. But, you know, from McDaniel's standpoint, the, the, the sun has set. On, on his A-list status, as evidenced by the fact that he interviewed with the Eagles, they seemed to be interested, and they hired Nick Sirianni instead. Yeah, and if, Mike, if he ever gets an opportunity, he better take that job because I think it will be his last opportunity. But I don't think he ever gets another chance. He turned down the Colts, and that was his best opportunity to go be a head coach somewhere else. And I'm with you. I'm not sure he gets the New England job. I think Belichick is setting up one of his sons to take over that job when he's done. Now, what Robert Kraft wants to do is a completely different thing, but I think that would be what Bill Belichick would want is one of his sons to get that job. Yeah, Robert Kraft is setting up one of his sons to run the team, and th th that son's got to be on board with the son of Belichick taking over the Patriots, so we'll see how that all plays out. But <laughs> one of those or both of those kids is going to end up being a head coach somewhere because Belichick, and you're just going to assume they know what they're doing, and also they have somebody they can call on the phone for advice anytime they want.